In this episode, we'll look at the relationship between content and data. Usually when we talk about data, we mean statistical information about how students learn and how they relate to the technology, the number of clicks, or the time spent on a particular screen. But in this episode, we're going to take a different twist on the topic of educational content and data. We're going to be talking about content as data. This can be a challenging notion to wrap your head around, so we're going to start with an analogy to something familiar. We're going to look at maps. Maps have been around for a very long time, and it's easy to see why. A map provides the lay of the land. It helps you figure out where you are and how you can get to where you want to go. Over the centuries, as our needs have changed, so have the maps themselves. We develop different views for different purposes. Some of these maps can be quite schematic, highlighting essential details and hiding distractions. And depending on where our journey is taking us, we might end up mapping features that were previously unimportant or even invisible to us. The surface of the ocean may look to the naked eye like an undifferentiated field of blue, but if you're a sailor trying to cross it, then knowing where the currents lie beneath, or where the winds travel above, becomes crucial. So we make new maps for new journeys and new needs. In the last decade, there's been a real revolution in this millennia-old technology. Now that maps have been digitized, they not only help us figure out where we are and where we might go, but actually plot a course that gets us efficiently from point A to point B. And the reason that they're able to do this is related to the specific way in which they have been digitized. It is possible to make a paper map into a digital image, reproducing on the screen what you see on the page, but that image, that digital representation of the lines on the paper, doesn't give us anything that we couldn't already get from the original paper map. The revolution came when those lines were translated into machine-readable GPS coordinates. Once those locations on a map were transformed into data, it became possible to correlate them with other data, like hurricane damage reports or restaurant reviews. Usually when we reach for a map, we don't really care about the map itself. We just want to know how to get somewhere. Now that we've turned the map into data, we don't need the whole document anymore. We can get turn-by-turn -turn directions, custom written for our personal journey, and delivered to us just as we need them. They even respond to the mistakes that we make and help us find our way back on track. They can also help us find places that we didn't even know we were looking for. For example, they can show us local chef's favorite restaurants that are within walking distance of where we happen to be at the moment. If you think about it, a map is a pretty good metaphor for educational content. We even use that metaphor explicitly. We'll talk about a curriculum map, for example. Think about the content that you work on with your course materials and how it is used in the classroom. What other information might you be able to cross-reference it with to create new and useful capabilities for students and teachers? There are a number of answers you might have come up with. One of the simplest ones is time. A syllabus is partly a timeline that organizes educational content by due date. When we turn that information into a format that can be read by a digital calendar, then we give our students a new ability to integrate that information with other calendar information and take control over their schedules. Another possibility is learning objectives, competencies, and outcomes. For our purposes, we don't need to make distinctions among these terms. The basic idea is to break the course or curriculum down into smaller knowledge or skill goals. This approach doesn't work equally well for every subject, but for some, like math, it's fairly straightforward to construct a skill tree. For any learning goal that students choose, they could see the concepts and skills they would need to learn in order to reach that goal. If the goals are then matched up in the software with assessment questions, then students could get the equivalent of turn-by-turn -turn directions. And teachers could get information about which students are struggling with which learning goals. And just like with maps, the data not only gets students from point A to point B, but can also help them discover points unknown. For example, maybe they would like to search real-world applications of the skill they just learned, maybe a hobby or a special interest. When you think about your own content, what other information can you think of that could be mapped to the learning goals or competencies? 
Again, there are many possible answers that you could have come up with, some of which are specific to your discipline or course content. A composition course might index particular grammatical constructions or rhetorical approaches to passages in literature or in famous speeches, showing how they work when applied by a master. Statistics competencies could be linked to descriptions of different problems in different disciplines, showing students a wide range of applications and careers that learning statistics opens up for them. In the end, linking content in the ways that we have been talking about here is simply a way of showing its connections to the rest of the world. By thinking about your content as data, you can use the power of the computer to help bring those connections alive for students.